Everyone knows the value of gasoline. It's that brown fluid that powers cars, trucks, jets, and even your lawnmower. But did you know it's also used in plastics, rubbers, and even some medicines? So how exactly is gasoline made? In today's video, let's talk all about how this resource is made and what factors drive up the price sky high. What is gasoline? We all know it's a flammable liquid we get from refining oil, but it wasn't always considered important. Instead, it was treated pretty differently in the early days. Considered just a byproduct of kerosene production, it was actually tossed aside, but its ability to vaporize at low temperatures made it the perfect thing for engines. Today, gasoline powers most of our cars, but where does it all come from? Well, the heart of gasoline is petroleum, a fossil fuel formed from ancient plants and animals squeezed under massive pressure for millions of years. It's the world's leading energy source, and the US is its biggest fan, using up millions of barrels every day. Most of the world's crude oil lies beneath the Persian Gulf, but there are other major reserves in Alaska and the Gulf of Mexico. So, gasoline is made up of hydrocarbons, which are chains of carbon atoms. These chains come in different lengths, affecting their boiling points. Gasoline has 6 to 10 carbon atoms, so it sits between lighter gases and heavier oils in terms of its boiling point. The refining process is all about breaking down crude oil into these hydrocarbon lengths. In the past, organic lead compounds were added to reduce engine knocking, but environmental concerns have made this practice rare. Instead, other chemicals are added to stabilize gasoline and enhance its color and smell. This process is known as sweetening. The first step in gasoline production is finding its source material, petroleum. Crude oil is typically trapped in porous rock formations known as reservoir rock. Explorers search for potential oil concentrations by some innovative methods, analyzing surface features, sound waves reflecting off the rock, and using gravity meters all help detect differences in rock formations. Once a potential reservoir is identified, the area is test drilled. Core samples are taken and chemically analyzed to confirm the presence of oil. Then, once a reservoir is confirmed, wells are drilled. These wells often reach over 1,000 feet into the rock. Rotary drills bore holes into the ground, and water is added to create a thick mud. This mud prevents the oil from gushing out due to pressure. When the oil reservoir is reached, the drill is removed and a pipe is inserted for oil extraction. Oil is recovered using a system of pipes and valves installed directly into the well. The natural pressure of the reservoir pushes the oil into the pipes. These pipes are connected to a recovery system that separates the oil from gas. Once crude oil is extracted, it needs to be transported to refineries and storage facilities. Transportation methods include pipelines, trains, and tankers. But pipelines are the most preferred because of safety and cost-effectiveness. Tankers are awesome for long-distance transport across oceans, but trains aren't ideal. Too big a risk for spills and accidents. Refining transforms crude oil into usable petroleum products like gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel. The refining process is all about boiling points and separating parts of crude oil. Premium and regular gasoline are the most common types produced. Sometimes, ethanol is added to reduce emissions and boost fuel efficiency. The first stage of refining is distillation. Crude oil is heated and vaporized in a distillation tower. As the vapor rises and cools, different hydrocarbons condense at various levels. Now we have separated into components. Heavier hydrocarbons like asphalt and tar condense at the bottom, but lighter ones like natural gas collect at the top. Then there's the cracking stage. Large hydrocarbon molecules are broken down into smaller ones to produce gasoline. This process is super important. It makes sure that the gasoline has desirable properties such as low sulfur content and a high octane rating. Two methods are used here. One is catalytic cracking, which uses a catalyst to speed up the process. The second is thermal cracking, which relies on high temperatures. After distillation and cracking, refiners blend hydrocarbons based on factors like altitude, season, and vehicle type. 
The blending process determines the gasoline's volatility, emissions characteristics, and overall performance. Most gasoline contains 5 to 15 hydrocarbons, each adding some unique properties to the final product. Now it's time for the fractional distillation. This process separates crude oil into different components by heating the oil in a large distillation tower. The process involves vaporizing the oil with different hydrocarbon chains condensing in the tower based on their boiling points. Lighter hydrocarbons like gasoline are collected near the top of the tower. After fractional distillation, the gasoline gets even more refined for peak quality. Catalytic cracking, one of the most important refining steps, uses catalysts, high temperatures, and pressure to break down larger molecules into gasoline components. Another process, polymerization, combines smaller molecules of lighter gases into larger ones suitable for use as liquid fuels. Once gasoline is refined, other chemicals are added to improve its performance and stability. Anti-knock compounds are added to prevent engine knock. This is a condition where the fuel burns too quickly, causing inefficient combustion. In the past, tetraethyl lead was used as an anti-knock additive in leaded gasoline. But unleaded gasoline is refined more, minimizing the need for such additives. Other additives are included to prevent the formation of gum, a resin that can coat engine parts and break them down. Gasoline is mainly composed of two volatile liquids, heptane and isooctane. Heptane burns quickly and causes a lot of knocking in engines, while isooctane burns more slowly and reduces knocking. The ratio of heptane to isooctane determines the octane rating of gasoline. A higher percentage of isooctane results in a higher octane rating and less engine knocking. On average, 44.4% of petroleum is converted into gasoline. That's a big chunk. But here's an interesting fact. There are no true waste products from petroleum. Lighter byproducts like natural gas, jet fuel, and kerosene are all valuable. Heavier byproducts are used in the production of lubricants, plastics, and asphalt. And even the less valuable petroleum products can be converted into more desirable compounds. Today's tech is focused on squeezing the most out of remaining oil reserves and finding alternative energy sources. Scientists are working on pinpointing oil reservoir sizes and automating oil recovery all to increase the amount of oil extracted from these known reserves. To do so, newer tools are pretty helpful. Echo meters and SCADA systems are making oil extraction more efficient, safer, and less labor-intensive. These methods allow us to extract more oil than ever before by injecting gases or drilling horizontally. But let's face it, gasoline's days are numbered. Petroleum is a non-renewable resource, so the real future lies in clean energy sources. As oil supplies decrease, steam power, electric vehicles, and solar and wind energy are stepping up to fuel the machines of tomorrow. Well, that's all from us. If you want to know more about what goes on in factories, check out the other videos on our channel. Until then, thank you for watching.